Hello everybody, my name is PJ and this is my 8th Let's Play, my 100 subscriber special. Off. You all voted for it? Yep, so the vote, it won by a landslide. Yeah, it had the majority of all of the votes that you gave it. You guys really wanted me to play off, so now I am. 100 subscribers. Next subscriber special will be at 200. So, if you don't know what off is, you can probably already tell just from the way that menu is shaped. You've probably seen it a million times if you've ever even heard of RPG Maker. Yeah, this was an RPG Maker 2003 game. Made in 2008 though, that's just when the program came out. It was a French game made by Mortis Ghost, and it wasn't translated into English until 2012. You probably saw a lot of people on YouTube playing it around the same time, like Markiplier and Koei Kenshin. Maybe a couple years later, I'm not entirely sure. But this is probably the most popular and famous RPG Maker game ever made. Graphically, it's not that spectacular, but it's got a fantastic soundtrack composed by Alias Conrad Coldwood. I recommend looking him up. And this is one of the first games to spawn a fan theory community. You know how Dark Souls and Undertale and Five Nights at Freddy's all have people who like make videos and articles discuss, discuss, discussing the fan theories about the lore and trying to solve the puzzle? Off was one of the first, and this came out before Dark Souls. Yeah, wrap your head around that for a second. But yeah, Off, despite being the most popular and famous RPG Maker game, still only just a cult following. RPG Maker games have a bad reputation, and it's completely understandable too. You wouldn't believe how pissed off I get every time I see an RPG Maker game on Steam that just uses the default assets, which they're legally allowed to do, but it still pisses me off. Either way, uh, before I actually begin the game, I have a couple of announcements to make. You've probably already seen it in the description, it's been in my descriptions for like the past week or so, but the poll for what my 11th Let's Play series will be is up and active. So, if you want to vote on that, you can. The 10th Let's Play poll is still active too, because the game I'll be playing after this is Final Fantasy IV. So, if you haven't voted yet, you have plenty of time, but I recommend doing so before you forget. You can vote for as many games as you want on the poll. And finally, um, from this point forward, my upload schedule is going to be a bit different than it was before. The episodes aren't going to be as long, because I'm going to be uploading my videos and my 2P episodes that I recorded myself and Tyler every day. Sun Sunday through Friday, you'll get a 1P and a 2P episode, and then Saturdays will just be a D&D video, like it's always been, because Saturdays are the days me and Tyler record. So, yeah, the videos won't be as long, but overall, you'll be getting more videos, so you can't be too unhappy about that. Okay, so... Now we begin, and boy is there a lot to talk about with this game. I've never actually played this game before, I've only watched other people play it. And I'm not playing the same version as them, actually. I said that it was first translated into English in 2012. The version I'm playing is an updated one, that was made in 2016, and is the one that Mortis Ghost himself, the creator, approves of. So that's the version I'm playing. If this text is hard to read, please exit the game and... Yeah, okay, I, I, I'm I, good. It is possible that certain scenes in this game are shocking to an unwarned public. Or maybe not. The musical pieces and sound effects of off created by Alias Conrad Coldwater are an important part of the game. It would be a shame to play without them. Indeed it would. I love this game soundtrack so much. Unproductive fun time. Enter your name. Now, when it tells you to enter your name, it's literally, it literally means your name. You're not naming a character in this case. It means you. So, yeah. For some reason, my controller is configured to the joystick instead of the D-pad. For this, I'm not sure why, and I don't know how to change it. Uh, playing RPGs with the joystick is weird. 
PJ. Your name is PJ. Yep. I'm gender neutral. That's interesting. But I am a boy. Unfortunately. Alright. Welcome, PJ. You have been assigned to a beating... To a... Beating? Yeah. <laughs> you have been assigned to a being called the batter. Which is just the baseball player. The batter has an important mission. Be sure that it's accomplished. We will let you out in Zone Zero. Good luck. For more information, find the one called the Judge. Off. Yeah, so you as the player or an actual character in this game. You're in complete control of this character named the Batter. Though he does seem to have his own will and consciousness because he can speak without your input. And here he is talking to you now. He's saying to move my body, use the arrow keys on your keyboard or the joystick. To interact with the environment, use the space bar, the ender key. Oh wow, that's really finicky. I don't think I can do this with a joystick. <laughs> okay, guess I'm doing this with the keyboard. It's much easier anyway. He seems to be in auto dash mode. Is that just how fast RPG Maker 2003 sprites move? It's been a long time since I've actually watched anybody play this game, so... Uh, I might have forgotten a couple of things, but we'll see. Zone Zero. And this weird, wide-grinned cat approaches us. Kind of reminds me of the Cheshire Cat. There cannot be any other living beings in Zone Zero, so I must assume that you are only a mere figment of my imagination. Nevertheless, I will introduce myself. I am the Judge, and I am aching to know your name, dear illusory interlo interlocu interlocutor. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's the judge's thing. He likes to talk in a lot of big words. I'm the batter. I've been assigned to a sacred mission. It is a pleasure. However, it is not the puppet I was addressing, but the puppeteer controlling it. What is your name, dear puppeteer? His name is PJ. He can't talk to us. However, he can hear and see everything. Even though you too are but an inexistent apparition in my eyes, let it be said that I am delighted to meet you as well, dear PJ. I believe we're in need of your services. Many people are in need of my services, you know. Everybody loves cats. We rub ourselves against their legs and purr in the most insistent manner. They adore that. I'm not talking about that kind of help. I see, but what sort of service could I offer to an ectoplasmic entity? I have a sacred mission to fulfill. I must purify the world. There is no objective more laudable than yours. I accept to serve you as a guide through this area, if it is of any help to you. Thanks. Yeah, so, already things are kind of weird. So, this batter's mission... Yeah, I don't, don't ask why he's just a baseball player. That's another one of the mysteries of this game. Yeah, but his mission is to purify the world, and what that entails will become more apparent as we play the game. It's not explained right away, but looking around, you can see that this place does look very odd. The graphics are very simplistic for what they are, things are very symmetrical and edged, and this water, which is white in color, it's not really water. I don't suppose there's any harm in telling you, but it's actually liquid plastic. Yeah, so... We come in here, and there is a code written on the wall. I should probably write that down. Because there are puzzles in this game. Apart from the story. Okay. Come over here. A luck ticket has been found. Now, how do I open the menu? X, okay. Okay, objects. Yeah, the batter purifier. Yeah, and this is a typical looking RPG maker menu. Kinda wish they had changed it up a bit, but that's fine. Luck ticket. Recovers a moderate amount of HP. 
Now there's your first mystery. Why does a luck ticket, which is probably some kind of lottery ticket, why does it heal you? Is it supposed to symbolize you gaining hope of some kind? I don't want to start getting too mushy and deep right away, but still, there, there's a lot of strange stuff in this game, so you need to think about this stuff in a less literal sense and a more abstract sense. Let's see, competence. Competence is like magic. Like, we don't have any special abilities yet. Equipment? Oh, come on, wrong button. Okay. Herald Bat. Offensive equipment for the batter. I believe all the bats in this game were named after famous baseball players, so... Herald. I don't know any famous baseball players other than... Sammy Sosa. And, for a short period, Michael Jordan. I'm, I'm not a sports guy, I don't know. But he doesn't have any armor either. Like status. Yeah, hit points, competence points, experience. Esprit. Esprit, which I'm assuming is spirit. Agility. Yeah, and his sta his status is pure, which just means that he doesn't have any negative status effects. And the currency in this game is just called credits. Which could also mean something. Maybe it's like store credit. I don't know. What's this? Waiting? Active? Oh, that's the... Yeah, this game can have an active time battle system. Actually, I think it just does. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I was going to talk about the active time battle system in Final Fantasy IV. The music in this game doesn't loop properly. At least this song doesn't. But the active time battle system basically just makes it so that turns come in active time, rather than everybody taking their turn at once. If you have it set to waiting, then when you're looking through your item menu or your attack menu or whatever, then time will freeze and let you think. Okay, so we climb this ladder and meet up with the judge. Allow me to confess that I find you quite tangible for one phantasmagorial being. Might you, in fact, be a creature of flesh and blood? I think so, yes. So even he's unaware of what he is. So I have been mistaken from the beginning. You did not even interrupt me in my deluded phantasms. This is relatively bizarre, I must say, for you are the first living being I was given a chance to encounter in this loo. I had in fact concluded that Zone Zero was an empty land. Obviously, I was misled. However, there exist other zones, and in those territories, the risk of hostile individuals attacking you in the most violent manner is quite high. Your sacred mission will likely lead you into these lands. Would you like me to teach you the art of violent confrontation? Combat tutorial? Sure. Purification and progress. This here is the battle screen. As you can observe, you will find yourself placed at the right hand side of the screen. Your opponent, however, in this case, yours truly, will be located on the left, the correct place for a single combat. At the beginning of combat, you will be confronted with a choice. You have to decide whether to attack, auto, or flee. Attack naturally permits you to engage the fight in the classical fashion. If auto is your decision, the computer will make the strategic choices in your place, making you simply the spectator. Finally, flee, as its name indicates, is the option of the coward. I dehort this alternative. But now it is time for the offense. Choose attack, select the batter, then choose attack anew to off me with your bet. Do not utilize the auto function. The computer will not hold back and I would take risk of dying, taking my secrets with me to the grave. I don't remember if you can actually kill him in this fight. Yeah, but you see that bar in the far right? When the battle is actually going, it fills up. And then whoever's bar fills up first, their turn comes up. Now I can select the batter. Change his row. Oh, I, I didn't know there were rows, but I can't change it now. Excellent, dear sportive companion. You must consider the fact that the batters in the enemy's levels determine the impact of your assaults. It is possible that you or your adversaries could avoid the barrage of attacks you will throw at each other with slightness. On occasion, your cast iron will get you a critical hit, which will cause teeth to fly in heaps. But let us move on, if you are willing to. 
You may have noticed that when you chose attack for the first time after you selected the batter, a new window opened itself at the lower right hand side of the screen. There you had the choice between four new options. Attack leads to a soul strike against a likewise soul adversary. Competence permits you to use one of your special skills. Objects will grant you access to the items you are currently carrying. Finally, you have, yet again, the opportunity to flee. But remember, solely the batterer is responsible for that option in his personal menu. And that means that once we get extra party members, only the batterer can choose to flee. How about trying to utilize an object? Take this luck ticket and use it on the batterer's person with gratitude. A luck ticket has been found. Yeah, so then we attack him. That probably should have happened first, but whatever. You probably couldn't program it with the basic RPG Maker script. I've used RPG Makers a lot, and without hacking the script themselves, then it's they're really limited in what they can do. Impeccable. Your mastery of battle borders on brilliancy, my friend. But there is one thing we have not yet addressed. I am, of course, talking about competences. They are generally, in layman's terms, special moves. They can trigger surprising effects. They may induce a resurgence of health points, or may be an end of themselves powerful attacks. Nevertheless, know this. Any use of competences leads to a consumption of competence points, or CP. So I ask that you use these skills sparingly. Once your CP are completely consumed, it will be impossible to carry out heavy assaults. And if you happen to cross swords with a tougher opponent before being able to get some more CP, victory will be uncertain. But try it right away. Choose competence and try using the wide angle, which will allow you to analyze your enemy. I'm assuming wide angle is another baseball term. No idea what it means, but yeah, this lets you scan. Gosh, it's two competence points. The Judge, an odd-appearing cryptic cat, 300 hit points, 30 CP, no weakness or resistances. Eh, 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 you know not. You now know not only all about me, but also about the art of combat. I'm not exactly sure what the eh, eh, in the beginning is supposed to represent. About the wide angle, know that its analysis will always be based on the start of the battle. Thus, it may accidentally analyze adversaries you have already knocked out for a long time. What? The confrontation ends, theoretically, when the health points of your team or all of your opponents fall to zero. Take good care of your health if you want a successful career in purification. From now on, you will be ready to crush all impure obstacles that get in your luminous mission's way. Well, supposing your intelligence is on the same level with your undeniable capability of dealing bat blows to an innocent cat. Be it as it may, your training has not reached its end yet. Let me ask you to follow me if you still want me as your guide. Just zips up into the sky. Yeah, but it is possible, I think, to get an alternate scenario with the judge if you just keep attacking him. It might even be possible to kill him. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not entirely certain. I'll have to try that out sometime. Yep, so... Here's a puzzle room. In fact, the solution is already blatantly obvious. One, two, three, four. Yeah, these blocks can be examined. Yep. Ah yes, to pass through here you need to use your cerebral organ. You know, the one bathing flabbily in your tired cranium. I believe those floating blocks correspond to the symbols you can see on the wall in some way or another. Yep, so one, two, three, four, in that order. Easy. Is there a problem, my dear pictorial heroes? I am not your janitor. I cannot do everything for you. Nonetheless, may I dare to suggest you wage activating certain ones of these strange floating blocks more than one time if required? So come, solve this intriguing puzzle for me, and quickly if you please. I wish to rejoin the ground floor as soon as possible. Yeah, so... I'm assuming that these are just ordered from left to right. So this would be one... Two... Six, eight, 
two again, and three. Yep, easy. Okay, now we come to a room with no numbers. Aha! Finally, after all that exertion, the eagerly awaited recompense makes its entrance to the scene. It's his food bowl. <laughs> yeah, and now the entrance to the this door right here has been unblocked, so we can come back into this room and see the solution to the puzzle if we need it. But I've already written it down. A piece of silver flesh has been found. Silver flesh. Which recovers CP. Okay, so let's see. 448. C, which I'm assuming is this one on the outside. Yep. Yeah, you just keep doing your thing. Here is an accessory that is going to be especially helpful on your purifying quest, dear enlightened student and sportive friend. It is a cube hovering in midair, as you have likely noticed. Nevertheless, you will be able to differentiate it from similar ones by the contrast of bad taste it imposes on your view of its clashing color, defying any sensible course of plastic arts. However, do not judge it too quickly, because despite its criticizable appearance, criticizable appearance, this red cube is of undeniable use. Aside from rendering you the entirety of your health and competence points, it is capable of saving your progress and sending you to the nothingness. The nothingness is a lieu of transition outside of space itself, where you can travel from one point to another at the speed of light. So basically, these things heal you to full, let you save, and let you go to the world map. I now invite you to try it out in order to discover locations more populous in this deserted land. Open your wings, my dear companion, and hurry away towards the following zones without hesitation. Your only enemy is the fear that will grab you. Okay. You see how blunt he is? Do not worry, I too travel a lot of the different zones of the world. We will newly meet one another eventually, without a doubt. Ah, by the way, take this. This object of a curious name will be the key that permits you to enter Zone 1. Have I clarified that you can at any time consult your inventory and characteristics by pressing the escape key? Escape? It's much easier to hit X. It's right next to the spacebar. The Leo card has been found. <laughs> so, cards in after the zodiac signs. Go ahead, I am inviting you to try using the floating cube right behind you. Yep. Health points and competence points completely restored. Save, might as well. Return to the nothingness. Creepy, isn't it? I have no idea what they're saying. But yeah, these red dots represent the different zones. Zone 1, Zone 2, Zone 3, and the room. We can't go to any of these locations on the right yet. Just 0 and 1 for now. Let's try going back into 0 and see what happens. Is he around? Hello? Mr. Judge? Huh, guess not. By the way, the judge's, this isn't a spoiler or anything, but the judge's real name is Pablo. Okay, I still have a bit of time, so let's check out Zone 1. Which you'll notice is green instead of yellow. I believe the areas, the zones are color coded.
Yep, so and you can see the art style in this game is rather odd. Most of the sprites that you'll see, namely the battle sprites, are drawn in pencil first, scanned in, and then outlined with pixelated black lines, which is exactly how I made this artwork down here of a character that we won't be meeting for a very long time. But yeah, here we find some people. You notice the sign up there that says Elson? Elson is not only the name of a town, which actually is the name of the place in right now. This is the station of Elson. But Elson is also the term used to describe all of the people in the world. All of these suit-clad individuals that all look the same and are all incredibly cowardly and aloof, like, all the time. Train number one is a really useful means of transport to get about zone one. Yeah, we can't talk to that guy, but you hear how he kind of gasps for air when you talk to him? Yeah, how he's got those bags under his eyes? They're all like that. Please select your destination. Damien. We're gonna go to the town of Damien. Zone 1. But it is kinda of odd that the locations all sound like people names. And again, real life does that too. My, the city I live in is called Sharon, so you know. Train number two hasn't been active for a long time. Um, uh, a visitor? I, um, welcome to the smoke mines. Um, may I know who you are? Are you an inspector? No, I'm the better. I've come to exterminate the impure spirits. The better? The impure spirits? Are you some sort of prophet? Or perhaps a man of belief? Yeah, something like that. I... who sent you? Nobody. I'm being led by PJ. Uh, I don't know him. He must be a member of the superior personnel. In any case, that's good. It means our requests have been acknowledged. Here, I'm going to explain your task. Um, you're at the smoke mines of Damien, the southern part of Zone 1. Here we send workers into deep tunnels to unearth metal from the ground, freeing embedded smoke that was trapped in the depths. Thanks to a variety of tools, we were able to put some of it into bottles, which the Queen sends to the other zones. The rest of it flows free, forming the air that our lungs inhale and exhale, uh, so we can live. See, this is pretty fucked up already. So they have to mine for smoke which is what they breathe. They don't breathe oxygen, they breathe smoke. That's why it sounds like they're always gasping for air. Which kind of implies that... Uh, I, I can't even talk about that yet. Uh, but it's like smokers, you know? They, they breathe in and out smoke all the time, and then they get lung cancer and have trouble breathing and stuff like that. So... And that's also, that also is probably why they have the bags under their eyes, because even though they're not smoking cigarettes, they're indirectly smokers. As the first of four elements is an important element, and so smoke is one of their elements, replacing air I'm guessing. Because without smoke, people would have nothing to breathe. Uh, there we are. And so, finally, uh, how do I put this? 
Where are the impures? Uh, yes, there we go. There are many specters in the mines. They are becoming more and more aggressive. But, uh, in fact, it would be better if you didn't enter the mines, because... Because the regulations forbid visitors to access them. So, uh, here's what we're going to do. There's an annex tunnel that nobody ever goes to. But a miner went in there some time ago. And he saw something strange, he said. Nothing like the usual. So I thought, maybe it's the chief of the specters. Uh, so there's your task. If you accept, you'll go into the annex tunnel and kill the chief of the specters. Then the specters will disappear and we can work properly again. There we go. There we... Uh, do you have any questions? No. Ah, great. Impeccable. The tunnel is right down there. I'll wait here. Uh, well, didn't you understand? You go down to the annex tunnel and kill the chief of the specters. This way, after you're done, we can work again. It's going to be great. There's no save point in here, is there? No. I'm going to check out the rest of this stuff in the next episode. Like I said, shorter episodes now. But that is all the time I have for today's episode. I think I'm going to go back to the original save point. Can I go back there? Even if I can't, I'm just... Yeah, okay. Yep, so, like I said, all the time I have for today's episode. So, thank you all so very much for watching. If you liked this episode, leave a like and a comment. I'm still just starting out, and likes and comments both mean a lot to me. If you want to be notified when I upload more videos, subscribe, and you will. Gonna get up to 200 for the next subscriber special. And if you want to support me on Patreon, there'll be an end card at the end of the video, and a link in the description below. And don't forget the polls. Gotta go vote on those polls. So... I'll see you all in the next video. Are you kidding? Oh my fucking god. That's why they put it there. <sighs> That's why they put it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? We're past it. You know what? We're past the sad st Oh, you did it again, you stupid! I told you, I'm not okay.